Hey guys, um, a lot of you, if you've watched my Suicide Isn't Selfish video, this will make a lot more sense. Um, in the video I talked about how the day before my sister committed suicide, I went to a new church and I had, um, prayed about her and about knowing that she was safe because she had been missing for probably five, six months before we heard everything about it. Um, and understandably, you know, I was in just a lot of pain about everything and not understanding at all <laughs> what was going on. Um, and I know a lot of people probably took that as me, like, blaming God for everything. Um, which is partly true, to a degree, because I definitely think that God has a plan, and I just don't know what it is, and maybe at this stage in my life, I'm not meant to, um, because I'm not that smart, you know, <laughs> I'm really not. Um, there's certain things that I'm kind of good at, and certain things that I like more than others, but... In the grand scheme of, like, the world and, like, the smartest people on the planet, uh, I'm not one of them. <laughs> At all. And, um, I think even for them, they struggle with God's plan. Um, or if you're not a believer, not a Christian, or whatever, that's totally fine, too. Um, in that case, I think it's definitely applicable that, you know, we don't always know what's going to happen. We don't always know what's going on and we don't always understand what the heck is even happening in our life as it's happening, especially when it's hard things. Um, probably some of our reactions are, what the hell? What is going on? Why is this happening? What are you doing to me? What is, is the universe planning against me? Like, I don't know. I don't know what you think. I definitely feel that way sometimes, so I assume I'm not alone in that feeling. Um, but, um, that, I mean, that used to be something I struggled with, like, a lot more than I struggle now. Because, like I said, I'm not that smart. So, the creator of the universe is a lot smarter than I am. Let's be real. So, I'm okay with not understanding everything because I'm not going to. And I think that if I were to grab on to the things that I don't understand and like try to figure them out, I could spend my whole life just doing those things, trying to figure out everything. And I would never be able to figure out everything because there's just so much in the world. And there's so much that I think is not within my grasp of things that I could understand. Like, I don't know, theoretical physics. Not my cup of tea. I didn't even take physics. I took, you know, regular math and I, I barely squeaked by in that. Um, but you give me a person to talk to or you give me music or whatever. You know, that is something that I can do and that I enjoy. Um, so I definitely think that there's things that we're not meant to understand and that I'm not meant to understand. But that doesn't mean I'm not still going to trust God. I'm gonna trust God. Um, think of it this way, maybe. Um, when you were a little kid, or maybe you have a child, and your kid just wants to eat ice cream for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, <laughs> and that's all they want to eat is just ice cream, and you say no because you need other nutrients in your body. Say, say you're talking to a two-year-old. They're not gonna understand that. They're not gonna understand that Oh, well, my liver, my kidneys, all of this functions and I need, you know, healthy foods in order to have healthy skin. They're not going to get that. They're just like, ice cream tastes good. Why won't you give me ice cream? You know, it's just not in their wheelhouse of understanding at that point in their life. And maybe one day they will get to the point where they can understand that. And, you know, maybe they won't. You know, some people have different abilities than others. And I think that's perfectly fine. Um... But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't still trust anyway. Um, and I'm not talking about blind trust, you know, where trust is not deserved. Like, 
I remember I used to love dolphins. For some reason, I thought I was going to be a dolphin trainer when I grew up. That did not happen. I've never swam with the dolphins, although I very much love them. Um, but I remember um, going to an aquarium and they were training the dolphins or like showing us how they train the dolphins, I guess. And they said that, you know, they would blow a whistle when they told the dolphin to do a trick um, and the dolphin did it well. They'd blow the whistle and then they would give the dolphin a treat, like a fish or, you know, some portion of food. I don't know. But if they didn't blow that whistle, then the dolphin would keep doing it until that whistle was blown. And one person asked the question, well, what do you do um, if, if you something happens and you can't blow the whistle? And they said, well, the dolphin will keep trying until eventually they won't try anymore. Um, so, in the sense that, you know, don't do things on purpose to hurt the dolphin or whatever. Um, you know, there are some people that you can't trust, period. And that might be your parents and that might be you as a parent. I don't know. Um, so, I guess what I'm trying to say is... You can definitely, there are things and people that you can put your trust in and there are certain people and things that you can't. And I think that is a personal thing that everybody has to discover on their own. Um, or they can, you know, obviously get help from others, but that's a decision that you have to make. Um, because not everybody can be trusted, and but a lot of people can. And I think sometimes it's kind of difficult, especially when you were raised with, you know, horrible people <laughs> or around horrible people and maybe your schoolmates um, that it can be hard to figure out what to trust and who to trust but you know God has always been there for me um, especially through super hard times whoops, and but also through really good times um, the tattoo on my wrist can you see that it's a sparrow a lot of people think it's a dove but I don't know I call it a sparrow whatever but in Psalms 102, they talk about how, like, we are like a bird alone on the roof. But then in another passage, it talks about how, you know, God cares for the birds. He feeds them every single day. They don't sow or reap any of their own harvest, but he still provides for them. And to me, that is showing that, you know, no matter what we're going to go through, God is always going to be there. I think that the biggest thing for me is that sometimes I am so blinded by my own pain or my by my own anger that I can't feel God at all sometimes. Um, definitely true with my sister committing suicide. Um, it was really freaking hard. And um, one of my favorite songs is Reckless Love by Corey Asbury. Um, and, you know, the chorus goes, Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. It chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves a 99. I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it, still you give yourself away. And then, um, in another part of the song, which is usually the part where I start breaking down, crying, saying like, Oh, God, thank you for being there. Um, I was in the shower, um, crying, to this part, there's no shadow you won't light up, no mountain you won't climb up coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down coming after me. And it just repeats that over and over and over. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down coming after me. Um... And I wanted to feel it. I wanted to feel that overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. And I just couldn't. I just couldn't. Oh, <laughs> I just couldn't. And I was sitting there just, like, holding myself, just sobbing, crying. God, I don't feel it. I don't feel it. Like, almost arguing with the song, I guess. Um... And it's really hard, especially when you're in those, like, deep primal emotions, to feel anything other than that. And those moments where you feel so horrible, or when you're so lost, that 
you're not gonna feel it. But that doesn't mean it's not true. So I kept repeating to myself, you know, I might not feel it, but I know that you're there. I know that you're there. I know I'm not alone. Please show me that I'm not alone. If it is your will for me to understand, please show me. But if not, please don't let me feel alone. Um, yeah, I still don't know. <laughs> I still have no idea what the will is here. Um, and again, I'm probably going to be working on that. And, you know, I might not ever understand. And that's okay. Um, I'm open to understanding. But I don't... I'm okay with not. You know, I don't have to know. But I think one of the biggest things that this has shown me is that I'm not alone. And by speaking out and talking about all of this, it has made me realize that even more. That a lot of people feel that way. A lot of people feel so alone. And I just, God, it breaks my heart, you know? Um, so I think that's one of the reasons why I've been making these videos. Is I just want you to know that you're not alone. And I know that it can feel it. And it's okay that it feels that way. Um, I still feel that way. You know, I'm not going to lie to you and say that, you know, the waves have stopped coming. That I don't think they're ever gonna. But it's not about that. It's learning how to hang on for dear life um, when those waves come because you're gonna feel that way and and that's okay you know you're gonna get to different points in your life and uh, maybe you get older and you're in your 70s and you're looking at your grandbabies and maybe they don't come see you as often as you like you know and so maybe in those moments you'll feel alone but you're not. And unfortunately, sometimes um, you have to make your own community. You have to go out and find people and bring them into your life. And one thing that I have noticed is the closer I get to who I am in the sense that like, I'm proud of who I am. I allow myself to be myself. I'm that freaking weirdo in science class sitting there reading a book instead of talking to people. I don't know. That girl's still in here. But uh, I still, I talk to people now, you know, obviously, well, I'm talking to camera, so it doesn't prove my point. But anyway, the closer I become to loving myself and accepting all of myself, and the more I put that person out there for the world to see, for that world to hear, for the world to experience me, this person, as I am, I've had such positivity that I didn't expect. Um, because a lot of me for a while was just not accepting who I was. So I was just like tucking that away and I was like, oh, well, somebody's going to find me and they'll love me for who I am, whatever. Um, which is true. <laughs> People do. But I think a lot of that too is loving myself and putting that out there for the world to see who I am and see that, you know, they can love me too. And if not, that's okay too. Not everybody's gonna. Mm. I have weird thoughts sometimes, <laughs> I don't know, but uh, I'm okay with that too. You know, I think there's people for everybody, um, people that you're going to get along with, people that you might not, but the point is, like, it's okay. You know, it's okay not to understand everything, and I don't want you to beat yourself up for not understanding, because I think that's a really easy trap for us to fall into, because you just want to know why, and I'm very much a very big person of wanting to know why, and that used to drive me insane about a lot of things. But one thing that I have realized is that it's okay sometimes not to know why. Because that's not the end of it. You know, that's not the end of my story. And, you know, even though my sister is gone, that's not the end of her story. Like, I'm reaching out to you guys and talking to you guys. So, um, but it's going to be hard, you know. Um, Christmas is coming up in a few days. And I... My mom asked me today if I was excited about it, and I said no, because, <laughs> you know, it's the first Christmas without my sister. And I just remember last year she was having a breakdown. Um, I don't even know what about. I didn't even talk to her. And so I have that guilt of not talking to her. But at the same time, like, I just was not able to 
at that point in my life. I just wasn't able to be able to be non-reactive to somebody else like that. Um, so I'm gonna have to work on that. Um, so if you guys have any tips for how to deal with um, loss or losing somebody, you know, like the first Christmas after somebody's gone or like the first holiday, you know, whatever. Any tips, comment below. Let me know what you think because anything's appreciated. Um, one thing I did see um, comment somewhere was that um, start a new tradition. And um, so if you have any suggestions for some traditions that we could start with the rest of my family, that'd be pretty cool. Um, I sure would appreciate it. Um, so if any of you guys are out there struggling, just know that I'm struggling with you. So let's get together and struggle together because one way or another, we're going to make this through. <laughs> we're going to make it and we're going to be okay sometimes and not okay sometimes, but for the, we're going to be there together regardless of where we are. I'm here for you. I love you. And I hope that you know that you are loved. Bye guys.